Well, greetings. This is Pastor Darius Creighton at Bridge Builders Church International coming to you tonight with a word from the Lord. I am excited to be able to share with you. This is our regular Tuesday night Bible study that we're, we've been conducting over a year, year and a half in Madison, Alabama. And so tonight, all of our Tuesday night crew, man, you guys are locked in. And uh, we're out here on, the, on, on, on Facebook Live as well as uh, YouTube. And we're here to, man, just be a blessing to you, man, and share the word of the Lord with you just for a few moments. You know, the church that we've been using there uh, in Madison has chosen to shut down due to the coronavirus. But how many of you know we're still alive and well, and the word of God still needs to go forth? So tonight, I want you to... Uh, Tune in, man, and get all your friends and ask them to come on as well and uh, get involved in tonight's session. It's going to be a powerful time in the Lord. I'm excited to be able to share with you tonight. We've been in this series that I've entitled Manifestation, a Method to the Madness, because I believe there is a method to the madness. Sometimes uh, people uh, get discouraged in the midst of believing God and uh, seeing the fullness of God's promise come to pass in their life. And I want to combat that, and I want us to make sure that we're overcomers, praise God, and that we're victorious in all that God has called us to do. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Uh, I just declare your lives will never be the same again. If we start tonight, let's look once again at the, at the book of Proverbs, and let's look at Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13, and uh, let's look at verse 12. Proverbs 13 and verse 12. This is where this entire series of teachings came from because I, I noticed that there are people in the body of Christ who have sown seed, who have uh, believed God, who've received prophetic uh, promises, and others that who have just through the word of God have received words from God uh, but yet they have become kind of faint in their faith as it relates to continuing to believe God. And, and in many cases, people have given up. But I'm telling you, this is not a time to give up on God because he surely has not given up on us. Amen? And so the, the Bible reads here, and, and, and before we begin tonight, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this time together. We thank you for the word of God. And we thank you for the anointing that's here tonight to remove every burden, destroy every yoke, and we thank you that your word, your anointing is more than enough for us. And Father, we give you praise tonight for the miracles, the signs, the wonders that will manifest as a result of the teaching of your word. And Father, we pray that you think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. None of me, all of you, have your way here and bless these, your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. If you agree with that, shout amen. Praise God. And again, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12, here's what it reads. It says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Hope deferred. That word hope there is the, is the phrase earnest expectation. My earnest expectation gets deferred when what I've been believing for doesn't show up either when I thought it should have or how I thought it should have. But he says when that hope is deferred, it makes the heart sick. Now we've looked at this a number of times, uh, and, and I believe when your heart is sick, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 15 gives us a clear indication of what happens when your heart gets sick. Uh, let, let me just turn there real quick. Matthew 13 and verse 15, it, it says, for this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. This is an indication of what happens when your heart gets sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, and when your heart is sick, you no longer have an ear to hear. 
what the Spirit of God is saying. You, you no, want, no longer want to hear encouragement. You no longer want anyone to even share a scripture with you or pray for you. Why? Because you have just become dull of hearing because of a hard heart. And he says also, your eyes begin to close. Eyes being closed represents no longer having uh, insight or vision for what God has planned and purposed for your life. And how I many of you know that's a dangerous place? The Bible says, without vision, people perish. Man, we got to have, we got to keep vision near and dear in our heart. And I love Helen Keller. She said this. She said, there's something worse than being blind, and that is having sight with no vision. My God, my God. As we're talking here tonight and preparing you for what I believe God has in store is a great season of manifestation. You got to make sure you don't allow your earnest expectation or your hope to be deferred and cause your heart to be sick. I want you to understand tonight how to tune in, how to lock in, and get everything that God has promised manifesting in your life. I love back at Proverbs chapter 13, he says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is the tree of life. It is the tree of life. And so we realize now that this tree of life is the manifestation of God's promises, his, his will, uh, his plan, everything showing up in your life. And I want you to get excited because I believe that those things are headed your way and I believe with the quickness, praise God. I know everybody's kind of in tune right now with the coronavirus and, and, and a lot of people are running in fear, but I'm telling you, for the, those of us that are part of the body of Christ, it's time for us to stir our faith up. It's time for us to believe God at another level. And I believe everything is a setup for God to set you and I out and to cause us to move in a whole nother level of manifestation. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the time that we live in. Somebody say amen to that. And so we've been looking at this uh, manifestation, the method to the madness. I want you to get stirred up and not allow your heart to get sick so that you'll be in a position to receive everything that God has made available for you. One of my first points in this overall series was this, that you and I must know God. We must have an intimate relationship and understand who he is. And instead of trying to re-preach that, I, I want to just give you this one scripture. It's Isaiah 46, verses 9 through 11. And in paraphrasing, here's what it says. God has already gone forth in the realm of the Spirit and completed everything pertaining to your life. He says he's already provided everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's already done it by grace. He's already done it in the realm of the spirit. So it's up to us now to begin to live a life of faith so we can take steps of faith and move into and literally walk right into everything that God has made available for us through Christ Jesus. But when you know that God has already completed everything before he ever starts anything, that you got to realize that your life is, is involved in that as well or is included. And everything pertaining to your life is going to be all right, praise God. And I'm telling you, folks, when you know God, it transforms everything about you. Getting to know him. You know, the Bible in 2 Peter chapter 1 says, when you, you know, that grace and peace is multiplied in your life. How? Through the knowledge of God and also the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So getting to know him by way of his word, getting to know him by spending time in his presence is going to be precious in this season, in this hour for our lives. And so I want you to tap into it, man, and get to know God at a very intimate place. Instead of running rampant and allowing fear and unbelief to begin to settle in your heart, man, get in this word and begin to refresh yourself with the promises of God which the Bible says are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So for those of us that are born again, those of us that are spirit-filled and living for God, we have nothing to fear in this season. We know that God has our back. Praise God, hallelujah. I said praise God, hallelujah. Now, knowing God is one thing, but when it comes to manifestation, you also have to be willing to put in the work of faith. You got to work your faith during this season. 
You can't sit back just expecting things to fall out of the sky. No, you're going to have to put your faith to work. You're going to have to believe God at his word. And you're going to have to believe that what he said pertains to you. You know, it's easy to believe God for, for good things to happen in someone else's life. But I want you to begin to believe God for something good happening to you. Because I believe good things are coming your way and it's coming quicker than you got time to even prepare for, praise God. So I'm encouraging you, man. Get your faith working. And the Bible says faith works by love. One of the most critical things that we can operate in right now is the love of God. Showing the love of God one to another. You know, many people try to impress others by indicating how much they say that they love God and they try to prove their love for God by doing things like going to church or, or singing in the choir. And they do this because they love God. Well, listen, God wants more than anything for you to receive the fact that he loves you. My goodness. If you could ever receive the fact that God loves you, it transforms everything in your life. Because when you know the love of God, it's unconditional. When you receive the love of God, it transforms your whole thought process. You now begin to believe that everything that was done was done for you. Even Christ coming into the earth, him dying on the cross, him being resurrected from the dead, and him sitting on the right hand of the Father was all done for you and I. But when you receive the fact that God loves you, you'll begin to believe that that is true for you. And now all of the promises of God can be yes and amen for you as well. And so we're going to have to, number one, know God. Secondly, we're going to have to begin to work our faith. And faith works by love. But many people are like, well, what is, what is my faith? Well, faith in its simplest form equals the word of God. It equals the word. Now, many of us have read it. Some of us have even preached it. But the real key now is do you believe what you've read and what you've been preaching for years? Do you really believe it? Now with this coronavirus going on and all the other uh, epidemic things that are happening around the world, man, you and I are going to have to trust and believe in God and what he said in his word. And when you begin to trust, how I many of you know it gives you another level of confidence and you no longer allow fear and, and all of the, the, the fear tactics that are, that are being uh, spread over the airwaves. And, um, and, and many of us are just locked into what's being said and what's going on and how many people are dying and how many cases are reported near you. Uh, you got to kick in, man, and you got to trust Psalms 91 where the Bible says a thousand will fall at their right hand, uh, a, a thousand will fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. Somebody say, but it'll not come nigh me. It'll not come nigh you, praise God. You got to believe that. Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. You, you, we've been reciting it for years, but now is the time to believe it and to continue to operate as if it is true, because it is truth, amen? And when you and I stand on the word of God, the word of God will always uphold us and keep us in the purest form of our faith in God. But that's where we are today. We're going to have to work our faith. We're going to have to get this word flowing in our ears. We're going to have to get this word flowing through our eyes. We're going to have to open our mouths and begin again to confess the word of God and begin to declare that I am the healed and I'm protecting my health from sickness and disease. Begin to declare by his stripes, I am healed. Begin to declare that supernatural healing is the will of God, or, or, or it is the, the will of God, but the perfect plan of God is for you and I to walk in perfect health. And I'm declaring that we're healthy and wealthy, and we're operating in the wisdom of God. And we're strong and confident in who God has called us to be and all that he's called us to do. You're going to have to open your mouth and begin to make faith declarations. Work your faith until you believe what you're saying so that you can walk in it and see the manifestation of God's goodness show up in your life and the life of your family and friends and all of those that are around you. Here at Bridge Builders, man, we're excited. We, 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 we opened up on last Sunday. We preached the word of God. Somebody has to stay up, alive, and well 
and open for others to come and be able to receive the word of God. Because if you're not hearing the word, but you're spending 24 hours watching news, how many know you're going to be inundated with fear, doubt, and unbelief? You need an outlet so you can get some word to stir your faith up so you can believe to receive the manifestation of the goodness of God. I, I truly believe that, that this, this entire scenario that's going on in our country and around the world is a setup for what I believe the Bible talks about, and it talks about a transfer of wealth, a transfer of wealth. When we're talking about manifestation, I've been uh, teaching and prophesying that there was coming a time where, number one, something would happen to drive people back to church and back to God. I believe we're there. I believe we're in a place where people are looking for some kind of hope. They're looking for answers. And we in the body of Christ need to have the answer. We should not tuck our tails and run, but we should stand and face whatever the enemy tries to bring, knowing that he cannot win. And be a, a lighthouse, be a place, a refuge for others to run to so that they can be encouraged and strengthened in their faith during such desperate times that we have even in this, this day. Uh, and so, I, I, again, I believe it's a, it's a setup by God for, for some supernatural transfer. Look at Proverbs. Look at Proverbs real quick. Uh, once again, uh, I, I want you to hear this this morning as well, or this evening. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22. It says, a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. My God, somebody say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, man, we're the righteousness of God. We've been made righteous through Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, the Bible says that the wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the just, or those of us who consider ourselves the righteousness of God. And as a result, I believe not only is the wealth laid up, but I believe this is a season of great wealth transfer. It's a transferring of wealth where, where, where the last can be first and the first end up being last, where, you know, you go to bed poor and wake up wealthy. You go to bed sick and wake up well. I'm telling you, man, supernatural manifestation of the promise of God for your life, I believe is, it is at hand. And I believe we're at a place where we can see some supernatural transfer of wealth into the hands of those of us who have been believing to receive the manifestation of God's goodness. Again, I believe it's a setup, and I'm, I'm here to see things happen. You saw the stock market. It, it went kind of crazy on last Thursday. It bounced back on Friday, but there are a lot of people who made a lot of money between Thursday and Friday, and some who lost some. And right now, there's a very uneasy feeling uh, in the marketplace, but it's time for us to tap into the wisdom of God to know what to do, where to invest, what to do with what God has placed in our hands. And those of us that will follow the plan of God, the wisdom of God, you're going to come out and you're going to be very exciting, uh, excited. That's what I believe is the tree of life. Man, you're going to be so excited to see what God has planned actually manifest in your life. Somebody say, money coming to me now in Jesus' name. And I believe that, man, that money is on its way to your house. I heard that the president today even uh, is releasing checks to all of the taxpayers in the U.S. of A. And so all of us who've been paying taxes, supposedly there's a check coming your way. Somebody said, thank God for the check. Praise God. But, man, I believe God is setting it up for us to have some supernatural wealth transfer. The Bible in the book of James, chapter 5, talks about how that rich men are starting to howl and they're beginning to operate in misery. And I believe a lot of it is because of the, the transfer of wealth, leaving one, coming to another, coming to the just, praise God. And so he says that the money is crying to get out of their hands into ours, and we too should be crying or calling that money into our life, 
into our ministries so that we can continue to expand the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, man, the wealth has a purpose. And when you understand the purpose for it, I believe God will flood you with it so that his plan, his will can be done. You remember what the Bible said in, uh, I think it's over in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. He says that, don't think that the wealth was gotten by your hand, but it is God now who has caused or made you wealthy. He's the one that's transferred the wealth into your hand that you and I might continue the work of the Lord and see the kingdom expanded unto others. But man, I'm just telling you, I'm excited about the time that is before us, and you and I got to stay stirred up and realize that this manifestation is at hand, and it surely belongs to us. You know, one of my points in this series was uh, that you need to know God. Secondly, it was about you working your faith. I would encourage you to go back, get those CDs, and, and, and let them be a blessing to you. But my third point is here tonight, that you and I, even in this, this time of, of uncertainty, uh, the coronavirus, and, and all of the other things that are going on, you and I have to be able or understand the value of resting in the finished works of Jesus Christ. You're going to have to learn how to rest and be at peace and take advantage of the opportunities that God has made available for us. When we talk about rest, I want you to turn with me over to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, some very powerful scriptures here that I believe would be a benefit to us in this time as well. Uh, and I, I'm going to read a few verses, so don't tune out on me, man. Lock in, man, because I believe God's got something special for you. The Bible here in, in Hebrews chapter 3, and let's start at verse 8 tonight. He says, harden not your hearts, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, they proved me and saw my works for 40 years. He says, I don't want you to act like the children of Israel. As they were coming out of Egypt, headed to the promised land, they got stopped in the wilderness. And a lot of it is because they didn't truly know the God that had brought them out. They thought that they had a relationship with God, but yet when they got in a, a, a tough situation, they didn't really know God at all. And they, they discontinued or, or never began operating in faith. The Bible indicates that they were fearful, that they operated in unbelief, and, and all of that was going on. And that was the reason that they got become, became stagnant and continued in the wilderness instead of moving forward to the promised land. I don't want that to be the case for you and I. I don't want us to get stagnant because of fear and allow fear to grip us and cause us to be uh, stagnant and never moving forward to fulfill or receive everything that God has. He says, I had proven myself to them for 40 years, and yet they still did not believe. He says, wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. Man, how many of us are there right now? We, we, we've been going to church, we've been going to prayer meetings, we've been singing songs, but how many of us really have an intimate relationship with God and we know him enough to trust him in a situation of this, of this sort? He says, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. What is this rest? It is a, it is a confidence knowing that God has my back that God will, 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 will make sure that all is well for me and my house and that things will work well for you as well. He says in verse 12, he says, So take heed, brethren, lest there be any, least there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. You know, it's only through trying times that we really find out whether we believe God or not. It's only in situations of this nature do we really begin to see uh, who trust, really trust in God? He says, make sure that this doesn't enter into you. Do you know that fear is a spirit? Unbelief is a spirit? He says, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. My God, that said a lot there. He says, because if you allow unbelief in, 
it automatically means you're departing from God. It means that you're departing from the word. You're departing from your faith. It, that's the only way unbelief can enter in is when you begin to allow the word of God to become dormant in your life. Folks, that's why I'm telling you, read it. That's why I'm saying get it in your ears. Get it going through your eyes. Get it coming out of your mouth on a consistent basis so it can get in your heart. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and you see what you say come to pass. But if you depart from the things of God, you don't go to church. You don't read your word. You're not prayerful. Guess what? This evil heart of unbelief will enter into you as well, regardless of how long you've been born again. Regardless of how long, as the old people used to say, you've been in the way. Because many of us, that's just been it. We've been in the way and holding up progress in the kingdom of God. But man, look what the Bible says. The Bible in verse 19 in that same chapter says, So we see that they, talking about the children of Israel, could not enter in because of unbelief. Because of unbelief. Man, you know, unbelief is a sin and probably the only sin that did not get covered at the cross of Christ. Unbelief did not get covered at the cross of Christ. Why? Because if God had taken unbelief away, it would have taken away our right of freedom of choice. It would have taken away us being free moral agents. And so he couldn't do that, so unbelief still exists. But the only thing that overrides unbelief is the word of God, is the word of God. And that word is what you and I need now to stir our faith and continue to believe God for manifestation. Even in the midst of everybody running fearful and afraid and scared and so forth and so on, I'm telling you God is still at work in your life and my life as well. Now, let's drop down to chapter 4 because God continues to minister to us about entering into rest, trusting that what Jesus did on that cross was more than enough for our lives. It was more than enough for our prosperity, our healing, our deliverance. It was more than enough. He says in verse, verse 1 of chapter 4, Let us therefore fear. Now, this is not talking about get afraid. This is saying let us reverence God. Let us reverence least a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. He says, now, you need to reverence the fact that there is a rest for the people of God, and you need to be aware that you can enter into it as long as you don't allow the spirit of unbelief to enter into your heart. He says, for unto us was the gospel preached. Oh, my God, that's a good point right there. The gospel of grace, the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ and all that he has done for us through the cross. Now, you recognize that there are many benefits that have been afforded us as a result of what Christ did on the cross. When you look at Psalms 103, the Bible talks about how that all of our sins have been forgiven. He also declares all of our sickness and disease we've been healed from. And he, he, dis, he discusses that our lives have been redeemed from destruction. Praise God. How many of you know that's good news? And he says, he satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagle. My God, those are all grace benefits. But there are others. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30 talks about some of these same benefits. He, he says that, uh, in, in, in verse 30, he says that God made Jesus to be wisdom so that when we got in him, we would have wisdom as well. Not only do we have wisdom, but we have righteousness, sanctification, and a redemption. These are all grace benefits for us. And these are afforded us simply because we got born again and chose Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And I'm telling you, man, you got to rest in the fact that these benefits now have kicked in on your behalf. You don't have to worry about your life. Your life has been redeemed from destruction. You don't have to worry about whether you're holy or whether you're going to heaven or not. I'm born again. I am the holy. I am holy. Why? Because I'm one with God. I believe what he said. I operate according to what he instructs me to do. And I've been sanctified, set aside 
to do something great for God. But more than that, man, I am the righteousness of God, and I have the wisdom of God flowing in me so that I can know what? I can know all things. The Bible in, the, what is it, 1 John 2.20, you have an unction to function, and you know all things. My goodness, man, we should know all uh, that's going on. Based on what's going on, we ought to know what to do in every situation. We have, we have an advocate. We have uh, access to the Father through the Holy Ghost and through Jesus Christ to get all of the insight and the input that we need to make wise decisions in this season and in this time. But back to this, he says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. I'm telling you, in order for this good news about Jesus Christ and all that he's done on the cross, in order for that good news to even uh, make sense to you or profit you, it's going to have to be mixed with faith. That's why I said in this overall series of manifestation, there is a method to the madness. You need to know God, but you need to be working your faith because hearing the word of grace without mixing it with faith is not going to benefit you at all. You're going to have to operate in faith. You're going to have to believe to receive. I'm not saying go out there trying to make anything happen. I'm saying just believe what God has already promised and trust that what he said he'll do. Why? Because God's not a man. He cannot lie. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. And guess what? God doesn't need your help in bringing it to pass. He's God all by himself, praise God. Now, we need him to be who we are, but he doesn't need us to be who he is. Amen. And I'm telling you, God is a God that uh, has already made some promises, and he will not be indebted to any of us. He will bring every one of them to pass. So you need to rest in that finished work of what Christ did on the cross and know that manifestation is at hand for you. Verse 3 says this, For we which have believed, we do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. You got to know before this thing ever started, God had already completed it. And before your life came forth, God already knew what he had planned. And he, he set a path for you to walk and lead you into what is called the good life. And I believe God wants to lead you right into your wealthy place. And I believe we're in a season for that transfer of great wealth coming our way so we too can have an inheritance to lead to our children's children. And I believe that's the will of God for your life, my life, and it's time for us to get uh, some confidence and get stirred up about it and believe to receive the goodness of God in the land of the living, praise God. Verse 6 says this, Hebrews uh, chapter 4 and 6, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in, and it was because of their unbelief. I don't want you to get to a place where you begin to doubt, you begin to question, because it's an indication that unbelief has now taken root in your heart. And it means that you've departed from the word of God and you no longer believe it. But I'm telling you, I ask you the question, whose report do you believe? I'm telling you, for me and my house, we believe the report of the Lord. We stand on this word and we trust that everything that God has promised us, it shall, it shall surely come to pass. Verse 9 says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. The rest is there. You got to enter into it. You got to get to a place where you're not worried or fretful. You're not overly concerned because all of those, well, I'm just concerned. Those are indications of, of worry. And, and behind worry, it, the underline is fear. And you and I have to root out fear because it is the opposite of faith. You cannot operate in faith and fear at the same time. One will always dominate the other. And the question is, where are you? Are you living a life of fear now? And everything you do is a fear-based, oh, I got to do this just in case. No, I'm doing what the Spirit of God leads me to do day by day, and I'm trusting him that he has my life in his hands. 
But he goes on here. He says there's a, rem a rest that remains for the, the people of God. In verse 10, he says, For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. Self-effort, working works of the law. Y your work should be a work of faith. That is operating in love and trusting and believing God for what he says, making sure your heart is abundantly filled with the word of God. I heard a great man of God by the name of uh, David Oyedipo years ago, uh, he made a comment, he says, most people think faith is just cheap talk, but faith is hard work, praise God. Faith is hard work. And what do I mean hard work? It, it, it takes effort for you to open this book. It takes effort for you to listen to a CD or to, to, to pray and spend time in the presence of God. Getting this word in your heart is hard work, but it is work that is well worth the result that you'll get in the end. And so when you look at this, verse 11, and it stops here, he says, let us, there, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You got to labor, work real hard to get to a place of resting in the finished works of Jesus Christ. And if you want to see manifestation, I believe you knowing God, I believe you working your faith and resting in the finished works of Jesus Christ is going to be a combination that's going to bring great dividends your way, great results your way. And, and I, I, I'll leave you with this tonight. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, as he was talking to uh, those that were following him, he said to them, come unto me, verse 28, Matthew 11 and 28, come unto me, all you that are, that are laboring and heavy laden, and he says, I'll give you rest. What was he talking about here? Those of you that are inundated with fear and unbelief and worry and doubt, he says, come unto me, come to me, come, allow me. Uh, to be in your life and he says I'll give you rest he says take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls see the rest is not physical rest it is a mental or a soulish rest that's where you do your thinking your choosing it's where you have your emotions and when your emotions get out of control, when your thinking gets kind of off, off, the, off the beaten path, or, or you're now worried, it, it, it causes you to get drunk in your mind. It causes you to be unstable in your thinking. And Jesus said, I'm going to give you rest in your soul, that your emotions are under control. Now, we all have them, but you got to control it by way of your spirit. Now, when, you're, when you're, your, your, your emotions are under control, your thinking is in line with God and his word. You know, the Bible gives us recommendations in Philippians. He says, think on these things, things that are pure and just and lovely, and those things that are of a good report, think on these. Th that's how we need to think. We need to be reminded of the scriptures, reminded of the promises of God, reminded of the word that God has spoken in our lives. I mean, you've been to so many prophetic conferences and you got so many prophetic promises now is the time for you to pull those out and believe what God has said. Amen. Don't run and tuck your tail now. It's time to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. But Jesus says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Folks, I'm telling you, if you're not born again, if you're listening to me, wherever you may be, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Come unto him. Let him give you rest in this time of uncertainty. Give, him, give you rest in the time of, of fear and unbelief running rampant throughout our nation. Let that rest come as a result of your relationship with him. If you're not born again, man, just pray this with me. Say, Father God, I surrender my life unto you. I recognize that I'm a sinner, not because of what I've done, but because of my absence of Christ in my life. But today... I repent, I have a change of heart, change of mind, a change of direction, and I invite Christ into my life. Jesus, come in and make me whole. I declare out of my mouth, and I believe in my heart 
that you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. And I believe that God raised you from the dead by his mighty power. And as a result of my confession of you as Lord and my belief that you are the Son of God and that you've been raised from the dead by that very power, I declare today I'm born again, I'm saved, and life for me is better. If you repeat it, that man, welcome to the family of God. We thank you for listening in tonight, and I just thank God for all that God will say unto you. But remember, if you're going to see the manifestation of the goodness of God in the land of the living, you're going to have to understand what it means to know God, to work your faith, and to rest in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Listen, we love you. We thank God for you. And now, before we tune out, we want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed tonight. We want to give you an opportunity to give of your tithes, your offerings, sow your first fruit, sow into our building fund. Man, we're still believing God for some supernatural things to happen as a result of our existence here in the body of Christ. I wanted to give you some information about sowing tonight. Uh, one here is you can give by way of our website. You can go online at BBCI. BBCI, Bridge Builders Church International, and you can give online. You can give right there at bbci.org. Go to the Donate button, and there will be a list of opportunities for you to give, your tithes, your offerings, so forth and so on. And I would encourage you to go there tonight and go ahead and lock in and sow your seed. You also can text to give as well. Uh, I would encourage you, those of you that are you know the new generation folks and you do everything on your phone you can go and text the word give g-i-v-e to this number 256-670-1750 again you can text the word give g-i-v-e to the number 256-670-1750 and then last but not least you can also give via the Tidely app, Tidely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Go to that app. You can download it and uh, search for Bridge Builders Church International, and you can sow through that app as well. But there are multiple ways in which you can give, and always, you can always bring your seed here by the church and sow it as well. But, man, we're still operating every day here at the church. We're having services on, Mon on Sundays and Wednesdays uh, because somebody has to stay open to preach the gospel and we've chosen to trust God and do just that. We're sanitizing everything. We're doing all of the needful things to make sure that you're safe and sound when you enter. But we believe that no plague can come near our dwelling and even if it tries to enter the door, it has to die because of the presence of God that's here. So you come without fear, without doubt, without any unbelief, trusting that God has got your back and that you're going to be all well. So all is well here, and we're excited. Listen, uh, as you're preparing to sow your seed, I want to say to you tonight that God has said in his word that every seed sown brings back a bountiful harvest. And I want you to know that there's harvest that is at hand awaiting you, your work of faith, your knowledge of God. And this is not a time to... Uh, go away from the things of God. This is the time to go ahead and cash in, man. This is the time to honor God with your tithes and offerings and know that God in return has already honored you. I thank you for this time of worshiping God in the area of your giving and trust that he knows and he has everything working on your behalf. Hey, some other exciting news. As you're uh, sowing your seed tonight, I want to just thank God and declare that that seed is blessed and you are as well. But I want you to be prepared for some upcoming meetings that are going on this week at Bridge Builders Church International right here, 1801 Beltline Road in Decatur, Alabama. We're located at the Decatur Mall. We're right behind Popeye's Chicken. And we're starting our Faith and Finance Conference on tomorrow night. That's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I have some of my big friends, my uh, great friends of mine, uh, Apostle Amos Howard, Pastor Vince Allen, they're coming to town. We're going to have a blast. We're going to have a ball, man. And we're going to be open for business. We're going to be sharing the word of faith. We're going to be sharing the word 
concerning finances. There's a major issue going on now, people wanting to know, what do I do with my investments? I got these guys, they're coming in, they've been working the systems for a while. One of Apostle Howard's uh, main issues is wealth building and uh, investment, so he'll be here to talk to us about some of that. Pastor Vince as well, he's very knowledgeable of uh, the stock market. He's been involved in it for a number of years, and so there's gonna be some great insight. We're gonna be stirring your faith up. We're gonna be talking about leadership. So it's just gonna be a fun time. The format may be just a little different. We may all be working together uh, in these sessions. And so everybody will get a chance to put their plug in. You can ask your questions as well. Uh, we'll look at what we can do online, but man, there's nothing like being here in the presence of God. And I want you to know you can come and feel safe here at Bridge Builders Church International. Well, that's tomorrow. We'll start on the 18th, 7 o'clock p.m. nightly, right here at Bridge Builders. Come get your faith stirred up, learn what to do with your finances, as well as get some leadership tips as well. But boy, you're gonna leave out of this place jacked up, ready to take advantage of everything that God has made available for you. And then uh, we also, on Saturday night, we're having another meeting. That meeting is all in Alabama. There, there's a church out of Anniston, Alabama, and they have a mandate to go to every county in the state of Alabama and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And they're talking about uh, evangelism, discipleship, and ministering the gospel of grace. And so they'll be at our church on Saturday night, 6 o'clock p.m. All are welcome. Come one, come all. It's going to be a powerful time of praise and worship, a powerful time uh, in the word. You don't want to miss it all in Alabama. I think they're going to be somewhere in Madison on Friday night, but they'll be right here in Decatur on Saturday evening, 6 o'clock p.m. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a powerful time. And we will also be here on Sunday morning. Now, Sunday morning is a first for us. We've combined both of our services, our 8 o'clock and our 930, have now been combined, and we are only having one service and that'll be at 9 o'clock a.m. on Sunday morning. I think it'll give some of those that are serving some time to rest. It'll give us as a church a chance to come together and become more of a family-oriented ministry and see God do some miracle signs and wonders in our midst. And I'm just believing God. For those that are uh, churches that are shutting down and you no longer have access to the Word of God, I'd invite you to come in, be a part of our services, I believe your life will be changed. It'll never be the same again as a result of the word of the Lord. So we're excited, man. This is a big week for us. Again, Faith and Finance Conference starting tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. All in Alabama will be here on Saturday night, and then we'll be back Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Uh, all of our people are showing up at 8, and then service starts at 9. We're going to get you in, get you out, but you're going to leave out of here full of the word. Amen? Listen. I love you, I thank God for you, and I declare that Jesus is Lord and all you're getting, make sure you can continue to get understanding and realize that what God has in, in store for you, no one, not even the devil, can stop you from receiving. It is manifestation time, and it's time for you to get your stuff, and I declare you get it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed, know that we love you, and we look to see you tomorrow night and the rest of the week. Have a great day. God bless you. We love you. Goodbye.